to say. Okay, we are now live. Okay, good, mo uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are here with Lou. Just wait for two minutes in order to uh, everybody can connect and I check if everything works. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we are. We, we are okay. We are connected both on Facebook and YouTube as well. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Afternoon, everyone. Okay, just wait for two minutes uh, uh, to wait for people. Okay, they are coming, they are coming. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we need some time uh, it does and, some, and Facebook always is behind as well for us yeah. so we have to wait for it to catch up YouTube's a bit quicker yeah that's true mm. that's true hello everybody okay little by little you know in Italy right now it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon so I suppose that we'll have more uh, UK audience, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Ah, okay, Diane. Hello. Hi, Diane. Diane. Do you know her? Diane Nemet. Yeah. I've, Di Diane's brilliant. Another brilliant crafter. Ah, okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Oh, what's the weather like today in in uh, in UK? Where I am, yeah, I'm looking out the window, grey, windy, grey. and it looks like it's just about to rain. So finally, uh, English weather. Yeah, true English weather. What's the weather like your end then? I suppose you're going to say it's really warm. <laughs> yes, it, we we had twenty five degrees uh, until um, next week, so mm. it was like in, not normal. But right nowadays it's sunny but a bit cold. Mm. Okay, so I think that we can start. I mean, uh, people will join us uh, little by little. I leave you all the space. Okay, all I'll, the turn, I'll turn and my you, camera over. You can switch it. Okay. Okay. Right, I'm just trying to work out why my camera. Oh, let's turn my volume off and then I won't hear myself either. Ah. Right, my camera has gone not the normal angle I would want. Let's see. Sorry if I'm moving everybody around. Let's see if I because I normally go landscape and it's not allowing me to do landscape. Oh. Okay. I'm, well, it's come out of my case now. That won't help, will it? Right, okay. Um, I'm just letting Facebook catch up so I can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if you want, you can even work like this. I mean, it's not perfectly horizontal, but we understand what you are doing. Yeah, no, as long as I just wanted more space so I could show everybody what I was doing. But I can work and I'll lift up to the camera. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to make sure my camera's straight. Sorry, because that will bug me. I do apologise. I'm a bit of a fussy that way. Right, okay. Hi, everybody. Now, I have prepped some bits in advance because, obviously, not everybody wants to see me cut out lots of everything. But I'll explain as I go along. Now, I'm using, to start with, the um, Dreamland, and I've mainly used either the background paper pad, the 12 by 12 or the creative pad. 
um, to, to create all the different parts I've done. And I've also used the chipboard albums. So I'm going to just bring one in. This So the chipboard albums, you get like five pieces and you get a front two decorative elements. So it's up to you what could be at the front, what could be at the back or make two albums. Um, and they, they work with ring binders, but, you know, you can make albums with normal spines with them as well. So I've taken the main part here and I've just gessoed this to start with. And I've then taken one of the other plain parts. And what we're going to do today is, fingers crossed, make an interactive photo frame decoration. So I want to work on it. I'm going to work on it in two bits. So I need to have the two holes working together that way, which means when I decorate my pages, those two pages will match. And then I'll turn it over and make the other two pages match. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, Mary Poppins here. <laughs> right. So as I said, I've just sewed this. So I'm going to start on, on this page first. Um, and this is one of the beautiful background papers and it's got like, um, hot air balloons in it. It's got like little stars and different shapes of hot air balloons. You know, it's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful paper. And I'm going to stick it down with, um, gel medium because I want everything to, to stay in place. So I'm just going to get a spatula because I prefer to use a spatula. Oh, which one should we use? Let's use that one. And I just want to stick it straight away to the back of the chipboard. And you, you uh, use the glue or the adhesive. I prefer um, a wet adhesive when I'm doing projects like this. But go with the adhesive you like. All right, here we go. I'm trying not to put too much down the holes. And, and I, like I said, I prefer a spatula. I just find one, I'm a little bit quicker and two, I can spread it out to be as thin as I want it to be as well. Okay. Just going to make sure I go right to the edges. But, and I'm just going to put the backing paper right on top. Now, so when I cut the backing paper out, all I did was I took one of the blank pages put it on my, my scrapbook page drew around it and then i've just cut them out so they, they actually fit to the page size and i'm just going to grab a brayer if it doesn't fight with my scissors and i just want to make sure that i push all the glue to one side so i've noticed there i didn't line it up and I've got a bit of wriggle room with gel medium, not a huge amount. I'm using the Pretty Gets Gritty one and it dries really quite quickly. Right. So let's just do that like that. I just want to make sure that all the um, air bubbles are out of the way. Sorry, my brayer came apart. Right. So let's just clean up that excess. I don't want that to get on the the rest of the project. Right, okay. Okay, so we've got that first layer going on that way, and this is the one with um, the air balloons. Okay, so before I, I forget, I'm just going to push put the holes back in. And any um, paper that's cut over, I can trim away with a craft knife or a pair of scissors you know whatever works for everybody right okay so i've just got that there and i'm just going to neaten the holes so i don't mind it looking a little bit rag because it looks a little bit nicer that way and i'm just going to scuff up the edges with a uh, scissors. So I want to ink the edges once this is dry. 
I'm I'm dreadful when it comes to this sort of crafting. I'm I know a lot of people ink as they go along, but I probably make life hard for myself because I never know whether I want to ink first of straight away or as I get into the project and I see how the layers are going. Right, so we've got that there. Let's just clear up that mess. So this is my first layer here. And I just want to build up all the different parts. So I've cut all up, cut some of the different elements. I'm just going to grab one of the sheets to show you what I mean. Now, in the 12 by 12 creative pad, it does the same for the 8 by 8 and the um, 6 by 6. You get some beautiful images. So you get ones that are girl, you get ones that are boys. So you get reversibles. So if you wanted to do it so it was on an aperture card or acetate, you could actually do that and then you put the over the top um, and then you get all the different clothes, lots of embellishments. So I've, I've taken some of those and I want, and want to layer them up as well. And then you get another sheet which has lots of things like the beautiful bird, the, the unicorn image. And if you wanted to make it more Christmassy, you've got Christmas trees, baubles. So this will work all year round. It, it doesn't actually just have to be for Christmas. It can be all year round. So we've got that going there. So I'm just going to split out how I want these to go. So I've cut out my little paper dolls. So as you can see, one facing one way, one's facing the other. And I've got his clothes ready to go and a cape. I couldn't decide what he was going to wear, so I thought I'm going to cut a little bit of absolutely everything, she says. And I want to keep some of this part of the door showing, but I want to bring in some of the um, other elements so I've got different places to actually glue on and see where I'm going. But let's just glue him together first because if this way I can actually he when he's if you look through the window you'll be able to see the reverse of him or you can put another one of the paper dolls on top but I just want to because it's double-sided I thought it'd be rather cool to have you could see the back of him so he's also looking out or looking in whichever way you wanted to make it so that's we've got him there okay and I'm going to turn him round. And I've got the reverse of his clothes to go on there. And I thought I cut the other part of his clothes out. We'll find out in a moment. So I'm just layering that bit on there. So this is like the back of him dress. So he's not just showing off his underwear. So we've got there. Now, let's see, what did I do with the other part of his clothes? There's me being all organised, and now I can't find what I've done with it. Ooh, that's going to bug me. Hold on. And I did cut them out. Okay. Right. So. Oh, right. I will look for those in a moment. Because I, it's going to bug me because I know I cut them out. So, if not, I will change my plan of what I'm going to do, but that's fine. No problem. Right. Take okay, your time. No, I cut it out. I know I've cut it out because it's gapping the page, but it's all right. I've got a plan of what I want to do. Okay. Anyhow. So, he's going to go. So, he's got his little cape that way. However, I mean, if you wanted to put it on the girl, it could actually be quite a nice um, dress if you wanted to do it that way. But I just want to bring in some 3D foam pads. And I'm just going to layer up his cape at the bottom. And we'll... Whoop. This is what happens when you have too much stuff out around you. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom there and just a little bit around the neck part here. Put the glue there. Okay, so I'm just going to stick that. So he's got that little cape going on, but it's got 
because I've just done that little bit of 3D foam there. It just looks like it's stepping away from him a little bit. OK, we're just going to put him here. And what I did do from all the different elements, you get so many different elements. I've got a moon that I just want to put on here. Now, I am going to colour these, but I'm just going to lay everything in place first and stick it down where I want it to go, because I, I, then I can work out where I want to darken the edges. So I've got a beautiful moon image there. And that can go whichever way round you want it to be. It depends on how precise you want to be. And I've got one of the other elements is this really, really cute. It's like a stalk with a little bunny on the top of it. And I've cut this out as well. And I just want to have this flying. So it's going over that element there. And I'm going to use my 3D. I'm going to use my glue gel because I can raise it just a little bit and I know it will stay in place. So that is going like that. And we've got that going there. So that's now going across the moon. And I'm going to actually have him facing. So he is actually looking up at the moon rather than him actually turning around and looking at us this way. So I want him to actually be looking up at the moon so we're going to have him going there. Now, I can't find it. I'm going to carry on because I can disguise what's going to happen down the other side by other embellishments. I'm just going to use my 3D. OK, so we've got him now sitting there. So he's now looking up at the moon. And I've got the background of where I've got this front of the album now is giving me branches and other birds and other images. That will work that way. So I, from a piece of grey card and a piece of cream, I've cut myself um, a matte and layer. And this is actually going to be where my photograph goes. And I want to stick this down now so I don't so I can work out what other decoration I want to bring in and um, make sure I don't go over the holes. So. I'm not obviously using a photograph, but so this is giving the, um, the an idea of where you could put a photograph. Now, you could easily draw around this again. And then if you cut within like a centimetre or half a centimetre, you could then um, create a matte and layer for... Um, if you wanted to keep the door shape, I quite like the idea that it was a square photo. There we go. So this is now where my photograph is going to be. And as I said, on the fussy cut element sheets, you get so many different sorts of elements that you can use. So we get banners. So I thought a banner would be nice that you could actually put your wording because on the back, you also get... Um, an alphabet so you could actually personalize it to someone's name you know so many different elements along those ways and I'm just going to grab no I think I'm no I'm not going to ink at the moment sorry I'm being indecisive and deciding whether I'm going to ink or not and I want to layer up these elements but what I'm going to do is I only I'm going to put a bit of 3D tape as well as glue gel but I want to make sure that if you were putting a photograph here this bit is actually free so you could still slide your photograph underneath and this bit isn't stuck down so that still could become part of your um, journal your picture I hope, hope that makes sense any questions please say otherwise I'll just keep rabbiting <laughs> right okay I'm just going to put a little bit of a glue gel on top of there and I so I've just picked some of the other elements that match the actual backing paper but because I've used a 12 by 12 sheet it means now um they're slightly larger than the ones that we've got um on the background so I just want to build that up a little bit like this and it's just tying the two in 
together. So I've got that there. And I want to do the same. So I've got a plaque here, which will hold, you know, you can put your um, messages in the collections. There are just so many um, different messages that you can get in all of the different papers that, you know, I could put. So nothing is real, but, but dreams and love. So I could actually have that on the top there, or I could leave it blank so you could personalize it and make it your own, you know, to start with straight away. So I'm going to just do this flat and I'm going to use 3D foam as a mixture and gel medium. I will probably go after the live with the gel medium and put it in place because gel medium just takes a little bit longer. So I've got that there. And we've got that built up going along like that. And I don't want that one. I want that one. We get some really adorable little postage stamps as well. And I've cut some of them out. So they come in in each of the, the size papers. You get different sizes so you can get bigger, smaller. And I've cut some of them out. but And I want to layer them around the picture and just build, build it up. But make sure my glue doesn't go all the way round. It allows, um, you know, you can slide your paper underneath. So I want to grab the bigger one. So here we go. So this is the like the big 12 by 12 sheet and you get the same on the eight by eight. You get the same on the um, six by six and even smaller versions if you've got the fussy cut. And I like the fact that they're all joined together. So when you cut them out, it gives the um, postage stamp look straight away. So we've got that one I want to use because it's a little bit larger. I'm going for the, the balloons because of this page here. We've got that there. And this collection, you know, it will work for projects for boys, girls, adults, children, you name it, which I think is makes it a lot easier to create with as well. You don't feel like it's one over the other. Right, okay. So we've got those there. And I just want to bring in different different areas that I can layer up so that's going to go there and I can then start adding some tying in the the different elements so I just want a little bit of foam down that side I'm just going to put it so it's on there well I went to put my foam away and put the stamp away instead which is a bit silly so I'm going to tuck that. So let's lift this bit up a little bit. And I can tuck that behind. And that can sit over the top like that. And like I said, there are so many different elements that you can add to different things. And I've got the little... A tiny little one there that's got a little um, magic hat on. So I'm just placing all the different so I can start tying in the two together. I wondered why that didn't stick down and the reason for it was it didn't have the, I didn't take the back off. But why aren't you sticking down? There we go. Okay, so we've got those there. Right, let's just move you. So this is the start on this side. And it's going to seem weird because I'm going to flip over and do the other side now. But this is how my head works. So if I turn this over, this is the reverse. And this is why I was saying that you could have him dressed and he looks like he's peeking through the window. But we'll cover this in a different way. And this is the backing paper I've chosen for this side. So, again, I've taken a 12 by 12. I've just drawn round it in a corner here so I've still got the rest of this paper to use you know for other projects um as I said they're double-sided I could have gone for the words but I like the imagery on that one so we'll stick this down there we go and I 
logical thing would have been to stick both backgrounds down at the same time. But I'm cr I'm making this how in my head I do it, which is not always logical. It's I know what I want to put down next and my brain has to go and do that. Otherwise, I forget. I call it senior moments. I think we're all allowed them. So there we go. All right, let's put that to one side. So I said I could have used the words on that side and it would matched, but I thought it would be nice to have the imagery. So I'm just going to line this up and put it down. And I'm just going to press lightly now with my brayer because obviously I've got things sticking the other side. And we'll just double check nothing's moved this side. A little bit of glue, there we go. And nothing's moved, so that's good. And I'm going to punch those holes and then at least I know they're done. So, you, I mean, I'm using like my old crocodile. You could easily use your scissors, a, a braddle, whatever you've got. Um, your pokey tool from where, where you do die cutting. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you poke, make holes with, really, I suppose. So we've got that side now going there. And we're going to build up these elements here. So what I want to do is I want to do my matte and layer again for my photograph. And this is why I've chosen the grey. Because I thought it would go, at least this part would go and match together as it were the beautiful papers beautiful quality and so much you can do it if you're the sort of person who likes to get um as much mileage from your papers as possible these collections are just perfect because you can use the papers as is or you can sit there and you can while away you know put cabbage matter on on the tv um and, and just snip away all the different elements. So we've got that going there. And from the fussy cut sheet, we've got this beautiful girl image and I want to have her in the corner, but as like before, I'm gonna put the 3D foam so I can still put my photograph underneath. Um, and, and, you know, so she can sit there and we've got the photograph and she becomes part of whatever we decide to put on there. I just want to grab and I just want to cut out. I didn't know if I wanted it or not. Is I want to cut out one of the clocks from the backing paper and I want to cut out one of the toppers. Because you get lots of different toppers as well. So you get tags, you get toppers. Like I said, you are so spoiled for choice, it's unreal. So I'm grabbing, which one is it? I couldn't make up my mind which one I wanted to go for. So I thought, so like, like for instance, these are all squares, but on the reverse of it, you've got like your one to 25. So if you wanted to make it Christmas themed, you could actually make it Christmas themed as well. But, or you can use all the different imagery instead. So like I said, this, this could go, um, you know, all the different times of the year. So I'm going to grab, and I want to grab this one. And I'm, I faff a bit because I will cut out, deliberately cut out elements. So I keep as much of the paper together before I cut everything away in one go. So I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. And one of the nice things about it is because of the imagery as well matches in with the background it's printed on it doesn't matter if i cut them with um scissors or i cut them with a guillotine they all still work absolutely beautifully now because we've got a a um rounded corner there i just want to round that corner so it just matches in a little bit along those lines and i'm just going to I would normally use card rather than 3D foam, but for speed, I'm going to use 3D foam. 
and I'll put some glue gel on it. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting all of the initial key points of the elements I want to use down in place, and then I can build up around it. The crunch when it's cut. Oh, yeah, Diane, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I know Chow Bella say that this is, um, I think our equivalent in the UK is 190 GSM. But I'm going to honestly say it does not feel 190. I would say it's a lot heavier. I mean, because I ink on it, I stamp on it, um, I'll die cut it, emboss it. And it definitely doesn't feel that at all so i've got her sitting on the clock there but I, what i wanted to do is i just wanted a bit more of her that she could be stuck down and i will put 3d foam here and i didn't want her to mount her onto card because i like the delicate delicate nature of it whereas if i'd got her on a piece of card and cut it out actually i quite like her now i've seen her on the card but uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to stick to my plan that was in my head, she says. I do, Diane. I really do think it's thicker than 190. Um, like I said, you can do so much with it. So I just need a small part. I'm going to go around there. And before I take the backing off, I just want to work out. So that's about right there. So we've got that going there, and I want her legs. And just a little bit here. But all I'm doing is just working out where I want to put the 3D foam. And from about that point to the end, I want to put a double layer. Okay, so... And just put that like that okay i said i like i like to have the bits where um you can slide your photographs underneath your you, your photograph doesn't have to then get stuck down on all to the detail so we've got I'm just going to put a little bit of glue gel on the 3d foam so the 3d foam will hold it in place quickly well, until the glue gel grabs. So we've got that now. So she's sitting there. So that part now is free and the photograph becomes part, you know, she becomes part of your photograph as well as the other way. I'm going to put her straight, though, because that will bug me if I don't. There we go. I'll clear that up. Right. I'm going to cut that out in a moment. So we've got that going on here. Now I've got him looking at me. Now, we've got lots of different toppers, you know, and they've got different designs. So, for example, if I because I've got him here, if I put this element like that and turn it over, I could use this topper quite easily. And it works with this page because I've got the owl, even though it, perspective wise, it's not the same. But I can have the owl peeking it in at him as he's looking up. And I think sometimes we get too obsessed with um making everything you know I, I get that you know that um things in distance things nearer to us but actually it's, it's all about the creativity for me it's what my eye likes to look at at the end of the day um and that's and that should be the fun of it right so we've got that like that I'm just trimming this down. So now I can put this here. I know this topper matches that background and I can build up from that background there. So I just want to make sure that the owl is going to be peeking in at him. So because I can build up the elements around. So I want... just want the beak showing right so I'm, I'm just working out where I'm going to put my initial glue because I can always um, put glue onto a piece of card and add some more glue and I want it at a slight jaunty I don't want it straight like that I want it at a slight jaunty angle 
and I can cut away anything that's in the way or punch any of the holes out. So we've got that there. So I, the owl is now looking in at him who's looking up at the moon and the other flying creatures. I think it's nice when you can actually tell a story with something that you're doing as well. Um, even if it's just for your helping you create. Right, so we've got that there. And I'm just going to punch those holes in because obviously I'm going to need that. So we go. Right. So as I said, so we've now got that in, but when I put this side over here, I've got these elements that now I can build up on and I can always leave these ones free. And one of the elements I did want to put on was this beautiful, because I thought it went beautifully with the time and the clock and it looks like it's sleeping. Um, it's this like beautiful little unicorn that's got like little wings on it. Um, and it's just got a really lovely ethereal look to it. And I thought that goes and the colours then tie in with those elements there. So let's go. Apologies for my air, condition, air conditioner. My um, air freshener going off. Living with an aged doggy who um, doesn't always smell as pleasant as he could. Right, so I've got that element going on there. And we've got lots of different tags and little bits of um, ephemera that we can add. So everything starts with a dream. And I can now start building up different layers. So I'm going to put this one here. Everything starts with a dream. Because even though I put this here, if I flip this over, and I've got this bit there, that's that tag. I've cut out another tag that can now sit this side so the two marry up so that the images look like I'm working at the same um, time. But I still don't want to lose any of the, the original page and the branch. As I said, I haven't um, added ink edges onto that. I've got something underneath there. There we go. Um, and I will do that afterwards because that, that's just how I prefer to make things work. So I'm just going to put this along the bottom and move these up there and just slide that in. And we've got that. So I've got the little bit of a sentiment happening there. And then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna put this one so it matches up this side. So it says it's still magic, even if you know how it's done. And because he's wearing his magic cape, I just thought the two went together absolutely beautifully. So I've got that like that. And let's just put his arm on the top. Okay. So we've got those images going there. And then I just want to bring in some of the other elements now there is an owl that we can cut out because obviously i've got the moon behind here i could have cut out another moon but what i thought would be nice is to start building up some of the other elements that can go on this side here and so that even though each side is slightly different to each other there is elements that match in with each other and I thought because she's got a feather in her hat I would actually put I might put a hat on him like that I don't know yet we'll see actually I think I'm going to put it there I quite like it there instead sorry faffing is my um favorite part of crafting so I apologize to people if it's not yours to me doing doing this sort of thing is just like oh you know when you're having fun where everything should go so we've got that little hat there and we've got the little wings going on there i want to 
I've got little postage stamps that I can bring in and I'm going to add some detail here with them and just tie in a few bits and pieces because you don't have to use lots if you don't want to. And I want to grab, do I want that? No, this is what I'm after. So I'm grabbing this one again because we've got like lots of different elements and I haven't stuck that all the way down yet because there's different elements I thought would look really cool that we could add on. The cat with the wings is really cool. So I'll have those two for now. We'll put that one there. And because we've got the the owl and we've got the hat, I just want to bring in some of these elements. go and then i and i know i really shouldn't have a mouse near an owl but you never know just in case he's hungry let's put that on 3d foam thanks diane it's very easy to be um cohesive with the collection because you you can do you all the time with the collection or you can be inspired by the colors or just use the same images um, and use them in different ways. So it's actually not that hard to create with it, which I think is wonderful. So we've got, whoa, sorry about that. I've got that there. So I just put that on 3D foam and I've cut out the clock because I thought if we have a clock coming down from our hand, it ties in some of the clock images from the backing paper even though I know I've covered them I can put that like that and that one's going to go there and that sits there like that and I where is the other image I'm looking for like I said I cut so many out that I wasn't like I said so what I want to do we've got some other little bird images and I just want to build up a little bit here with the bird behind. Put some gel medium on. And the bird then is sitting. So I'm just getting the bird's tail. So he's tucked behind the ear. And we're just building it up like that bit by bit by bit. OK, so I've got the two pages and I need to just make sure I do that hole again there because I put the beautiful unicorn horse image. I just want to punch that hole. Right, so those two pages now match. And then the next part really is just adding all the other little layers and all the other decoration pieces that you want to do to it. I'm just going to look for the lid of my glue because it's going everywhere. So now to make it reversible so I can see what I want to do next. I couldn't decide on the colours that I wanted to use ribbon or lace wise. And I, I got a lighter blue out and I got a darker. Um, and then I thought, oh, I could do a lace. But then I thought, no. So I'm going to go with the darker, to, I think, because I can always lighten it with the lighter colour ribbon by tying it on there. And I'm just going to make this into a point. Now, I was about to cut this, so it was a... And what I want to do is I just want to thread the ribbon going through there. And um, before I tie it, you see, I'm just working out how much I need. So let's do a point there. And I'm going to do another piece here. If it's easier, um, stick a piece of washi tape or um, on the end of the ribbon before you 
thread it through or if you've got a if it'll go through a darning needle so we've got the ribbon going like that so that's opening the pieces so you want to have them near each other but not right on top of each other i'm going to do exactly the same this side and put this bit through and I can then work out roughly where I want to cut this one. And thread it through. I'm trying to find out whether, there we go. We've got those pieces like that. I'm taking the twist out of the ribbon and normally that wouldn't bother me. I don't know why. So I've got those two pieces. I just want to try and get them so they're a similar. They don't have to be perfectly lined up. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some heavy things on the top of these. And that's just so I can keep them in place just for the moment. Because what I want to do is I just want to tie a knot. So I'm just putting that one around and I'm just going to tie a knot to join those two pieces together doing it quite loosely to start with okay do the same and the pots are just really holding everything in place you could do a piece of repositional tape if it's easy so I'm going to now tie that and I'm not doing them too tight like that let's take these off then I can turn this over and I want to just grab the tails and I'm just going to do another knot and this one I am going to pull quite tight and I'm going to do exactly the same with this side I've gone quiet as I concentrate I'm going to pull this one this time quite tight. All right. And then it's now I can trim this down to whatever sizes I want these to be. So. So they could be long, they could be short, you know, whatever you want them to be. So. Keep that little bit and keep this one quite long. Get rid of that and trim this one. And we'll trim this one. Now, before I tightened the knot up, I could have added more ribbon in and less, right? If I hold these in place a little bit better, I'll be able to cut them. There we go. I've now got these in place here, which now means that I can close this up. I can put these wherever I want them to be. So if I wanted this side on display, I can, I'm just going to get grab the tail. I can have the tail. So I can actually now have that part on display. I could actually open it up. So those two pieces, so when it's standing up, because it will actually stand up, I've got the picture one side and I've got the detail or you could be your journaling, turn it over. And this time around, I've got the picture this side and the detail and it, you know, they stand up. So you can now, but you could send it to someone. So it's all closed. So I can actually have it all closed. She's peeking through and it could be a gift item right from the, um, you know, right from the start. So just, changing the album pages it works that way and it makes it a little bit different yes you could do it with the rings but the only thing with the rings is uh, unless you did a smaller ring they dangle down um, and get in the way and I just thought the ribbon added a little bit of extra detail and you could um, then add things to the ribbon tassels whatever you wanted to do I hope that makes sense to everybody so now all I would actually go ahead and do is just add all the little finishing touches 
that I wanted to do um, on the piece. So I'm just going to cut this clock out and just tie in some of the other elements. And I know it's a pocket watch, but I'm just going to do it as a circle for now. And I'm going to put a bit of gel medium there at the top. So the, that can now sit there and it ties in. We've got that bit there. And then I've got some other little elements that I could add. And to tie in these here, I'm going to add those ones as well. So this bit now is, you know, where you bring you in your own little person, your own personality that works for you um, and the elements that you are going to do to make something you know, that, that little bit more or to fit the project for the person you're giving it to. So just a little bit of tape down that side there. All right, so. That then sits there. So I've got all those pieces so I'm just tying in the different but everything all of these bits are still loose that when it comes to putting your photograph in you can still put your photograph in and all these become part of the story you're telling with your photograph so we've got those there let's turn it over and like I said we've got the owl peeking through I've got some gluing there which is going to bug me so we're just going to add some other little we can add some of the other stamps and everything we've got going on and I'm going to grab I think let's do this one now there are so many different elements I could be cutting out look that there I'm just going to add that there so that hides the glue and the bottom of that um, tag or top of it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of inking in places. We've got that going to sit there like that. So that just hides that little bit there. And it ties in with the, the hot air balloons that are going that I can see around and about. And then we'll just put some of the other elements. No, but I don't like that one. Sorry. This is now where, as I said, this is me now in full fat mode. As I go, oh, I like that. I like that. Right. And I said, we get so many different elements that I want to add. So I'm just going to quickly just cut out one or two. And we'll do that there. And I'm looking for aha, and it's we get some really cool pocket watches, but we get both sides, so you can make your figure double sided, which means now I can have the reverse of the watch going there. So let's just quickly cut this out. I cut leaving a white border, um, just habit. No other reason other than that. Also, I think it's because it's a little bit quicker as well. But that's in my head. There we go. So I can tie in the, a little bit of the time element from the other side. I can now have this hanging from his hand like that and I'll put that there like that so I've got the and I know as I said before I could have done something smaller but it's also tying in that I've got glue spots glue areas so that's now going to sit there like that and then I've got this leaf shape that I just want to put into down the bottom. 
it's one of those things I could sat there and cut out so many bits but then I find if I do that I end up with a big bowl of lots of things to cut out which is cool don't get me wrong but in the same breath then I will spend all the whole time instead of making anything for you is just looking through my bit box going oh I like that oh I like that oh that's cool and that doesn't help anyone now the only thing I do want to do because I actually quite like the idea that the other side had a hat even though it was on the the tag I just want to add I think I'm going to add his top hat on because it won't be seen and I can have his top hat going there so I think we're going to do that put some gel medium on And it can be at a slight jaunty angle. And then I've got the leaves here. I just want to bring in a little bit of something down the bottom here. And all I'm doing really is just hiding where I can see there's glue bits that would bug me. Probably doesn't need to be done, but if your eye can focus on something else instead of where you've done a join, why not do that instead? So let's do that. And I can do another one going the opposite way along the bottom of the tag there. Right. And we've got his magic. There we go. And I was looking for, did I? Oh, I did. Oh, I can't pick it up. And I've got a little magic hat. I'm just going to stick on that part there and then I'm going to call that, well, it's not done in my head, but I'm going to let it all dry and I probably will go away and add other little bits and pieces to it. So let's get rid of that rubbish. All right, let's tidy up those bits. Sorry, I'm tidying up now. So that was using the chipboard elements to create. Now I've got a frame so it can close up um you know you can thread in you know i could you know not if you wanted to engraze i could knot in more ribbon i could add twine you know i could add lots of different other elements to it so i can see from there i've got little bits going through but it opens up into somewhere to put a picture you've got enough space that if you want to put journaling or you want to write details you can do in the same breath, I can go, so tomorrow I might want this side. I can put someone's name. There are banners in all different sort of sizes as well within the collection. And I've got the photograph going there. And I've got him looking up at the, the moon. And the only other thing I would finally do is possibly just add a subtle bit of um, ink shading. And I'm going to go for the charcoal smoke. And I want a little bit of that blue. Whoop. Sorry, I, I put my inks in fa family colours. So uh, then making up my mind which ones. You know, those two will do it for now. So these are the Chow Bella inks. And um, they're like an opaque pigment ink. I'm going to do that. Let's grab... And I'm just going to do a little bit of it because I do need to let this dry. As I said, I always leave my inking to last. I just prefer to do that. I know for everybody it's a little bit different. So just to show you what I mean. We've got. Okay, I can add a bit of the, the grey there. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the blue, just in places. So I would go around the edges now where I want to, to put up the frame, even on this side. But it was just to show. So that's to me is the finishing bits and pieces. But I do really need to let everything dry before I do it. Um, thank you, Diane. <laughs> So it's a different way to use your chipboard albums, a way to possibly 
you know, put photographs in there yourself and create um, a project that you could gift to someone. Um, you know, it can be sent so it sits there like that, or it can be out on display and they stand up because they'll see their chipboard albums. So today I could have it that way. Tomorrow I could have it going that way. So, you know, the choice is yours, how you want to want them to be. But they each tell a different story. So I can see the so this side going through the window, you see a different view from then if you look through that side going through the window. But, you know, you could carry on forever in a day. The chipboard you could punch. So I could punch two holes this side and you could have created a third page. So that then could go on top like that. And then that could go on top like that. So you could then like make a triple ditch sort of frame. So there's just so many things you can do with the chipboard albums, not just make memory books. I hope that gives everybody a different idea of what to do. Yeah, thank you, Lou. It was a, a really beautiful project. Yeah, very, very nice. And you use our the Ciao Bella paper in a very beautiful way. It was outstanding. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you to everybody. And uh, the live will be saved both on Facebook and YouTube. So if you have lots and some passages and so on, you will find everything there. So thank you, Lou, and uh, bye, bye bye. See you next time.